Imagine you had a hundred thousand users on your app. You couldn't possibly create a path for every single one of those users. For example, twitter.com slash Nick that's a path. Or twitter.com slash Alex, twitter.com slash Dean. For every single name, it would be impossible for you to create so many paths and hard code them in your code. So this is where dynamic paths come in and we're going to explore how to use them, how to link between them, and how to even extract the ID from the URL itself and use that in your code. So if we go to the docs, you can see that any folder name that's wrapped with square brackets is considered a dynamic segment. So in the example they gave, it's app slash blog slash square brackets slug, and then we put the page in there. And this slug we can use to dynamically render pages. So if you go blog slash a, the slug is a, and there's a page that the user can access under this root. So if we hop into the code, I've just quickly made a user type and created a few dummy users. And this is the mock that we're gonna just pretend I'm calling a database, but this is just fetching Nick, Mike, and Alex. So if I wanted to create a page to get the users, we could go uh, app slash users, and then put square brackets ID. And within that, we create the page itself. Hello, this is the user ID page. You can see if I go to that root user slash ID, and this could be absolutely anything. So do one, two, three. Oh, sorry, it's users. So users slash one, two, three. Hello, this is the user ID page. I can put anything. I am just button mashing right now, and it will go through. If I put users without the ID, it doesn't exist because we don't have a page.tsx under the users itself. But if I created this, then this page does exist. So if you want to have a slash users, you have to have the page under users itself. But as soon as we go further into the slash ID, this is the ID page. And then if we go back to the docs, you can actually see what they do here to get that uh, slug value into their code. So Next.js gives you this object called params. You can then give it a type. So I'll just chuck this in here. But ours is not called slug, we are using id. So if I change this to id, and then change this here to params.id, I should be able to see the id in my app. So this is user123 page, user123 page, and so on. I'm just going to quickly refactor this because I don't like the way this is written. I personally don't like putting my types directly in like this. It just makes things messy as you get more and more types. Um, but yeah, on to the next thing. So now we're going to look at generating static params. And what this means is right now I can go to absolutely anything under the sun and it generates a page for the user. But we probably don't want that. Like if there isn't a user called FDAKFDS, we don't want the user to be able to access this route. So what this does is sort of generates the available routes based on data from your database. And what I created earlier in this user table has the three IDs that should be accessible. So we should only be able to go to users slash one, two, three, one, or and two, and three, and we shouldn't be able to go to four and onwards. So how this works is we use this function called generate static params. I'm just going to copy it into the code so you can see how it works. Um, as long as the file page.tsx or jsx has the export function called generate static params, Next.js will know how to read this and process it accordingly. In this example, they are fetching from some URL to get the posts, processing it into a JSON file, and then mapping the slugs that they're getting from the post endpoint and returning the slugs into our params here. So in our example, since we're just calling data dummy data, I think the function is called get dummy users. And make sure that is imported up here. And from this users, we do exactly what they did. We map the users and their IDs. So now, if we go back to the page, we should only see the IDs 1, 2, and 3 available, and 4 onwards should not exist. So when I check the page itself, I realized I made a little mistake. The ID that we're passing has to be a string, but there I've passed it in as a number. So if you check here, this ID is a number. So I could change all of these here, but let's assume the database is returning a number. So I will just change it right here. Make sure that it returns a string. If we go to the pages, we can now see that 
slash one works, slash two works, slash three also works. But you would expect slash four not to work because of what we just set up. But what this function actually does is build the paths at build time. And what this means is imagine you had a blog and you had tons and tons of posts and it just creates the path to load them quicker at build time. It's sort of like indexing in a database, so it just preloads things to make your website seem smoother. But if we wanted to prevent users from getting to slash four, what we could do is export const dynamic params and set this to false. This is also a Next.js 13 thing, if I'm not mistaken. If I try go again, it throws me to the 404 page. And similarly, I can still go to two, I can go to one, but I can only go to the ones that exist in this database now. Before we continue with all the magic of routing in Next.js, I'm going to show you how you can navigate between pages so you don't have to keep typing in the URL manually. But there's two ways you can do it. There's one which is called the link component and one which is a use router hook. So the link component pretty much works like an anchor tag. So you pass it an href and the slash is basically relative to your app domain. So if I was www.google.com, this forward slash here would have www.google.com on the left of it and then slash dashboard. To quickly show you how it works, I've created a simple UI here. It says go to user one, two, three. Currently it does nothing. But if I added this link component and put the href as it says right there, this will then make sure you import it from next slash link, by the way. This will then take me to slash user slash one. I could do the same thing for all the other three as well. And with this, we have the same three buttons as we did before, but now it links to users two, users three, and one. So that's how the link component works. But if we wanted to do this differently and use the use router hook instead, we can do that as well. So if I just take this out, and then I type router equals use router, and previously it was from next router, now it's actually from next navigation. And I'm getting an error here because React doesn't like names that are just lowercase, so I'm going to have to change this to an uppercase page. And inside this button here, I'm going to add an on click to router.push, and then similar URL as before, slash user slash ID. But now as we go back to the app, as I mentioned in the first video, Next.js defaults to server-side components now. And we can't use this use router hook inside a server-side component. So what we have to do is write use client on the top of the file and tell Next.js that this will be rendered on the client. So by typing this, all this file becomes a client-side component. And now as we see, it looks exactly as it did before and we can navigate as before. There's another method you can use within the use router hook to quickly go back a page. If I go to the use slash user slash one page, I've slightly changed the style and added this go back button. So now we can go const router equals use router again for the next navigation. And once again, make sure we are adding use client to the top of this. And again, I need to name this page with a capital P because of React. And so within the on press in this, or on click rather, I will add router.back. This is a function, so we have to call it. And with that, I should be able to just go back and forth. But there is one caveat with this. If I was to say come from localhost 3000, then I hard navigate my way to slash user slash one, go back, goes back to the previous page that I was on the browser, which is this. And that applies to everything. So if I was on Google, then I go to user slash one. If I click back, I'm going back to Google, which isn't even my website. So only use this in situations where you're sure that the user is going to go back to somewhere within your website. Otherwise, you could just say 
router dot push slash users to make sure they are always going to go back to the users page. All right, I'm going to take a quick break there. I hope linking and navigating and dynamic routing all makes sense to you now. If there's anything else you want me to cover in the next few videos, just let me know in the comments. As usual, like if you like it. If you didn't, don't, I guess. I'm going to put the GitHub link in the description, so if you couldn't read anything or you want to follow along in your own time, feel free to just follow the code. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace!